the Superman of science, and he loves to play with fire. And the things he'll do, you can do, if you so desire, to try this at home with Mr. G. Hello, and welcome back to Do Try This at Home. This is the show that takes ordinary household items and turns them into something extraordinary. I'm here in my kitchen today. I've got my old science pan, which is a, basically a, just a deep frying pan that I use for scientific experiments um, so that it doesn't cook food as well. You don't want to be using the same pan to cook your food as you are to do your experiments. Now, I'm going to take this pan and I'm going to turn it on medium heat, probably around four on an electric stovetop. What are the ordinary household items, you might ask? Well, confectioner's powdered sugar, a quarter cup measure. I've pre-measured two quarter cups of confectioner's powdered sugar and placed them in this bowl. We've also got some Gordon's Stump Remover. What exactly is this? Well, it's potassium nitrate. And potassium nitrate, also known as saltpeter, um, when mixed with ordinary sugar, and then cooked up in this mixture. And how much of this did I use? I used three one quarter cup measures. So two powdered sugars to three stump remover. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir this up with an old spoon. What are we making today? Well, you'll see. We are actually going to be making today some pyrotechnic smoke devices. That's right, pyrotechnic smoke devices. Got an old bowl here that I can just discard of. I'm gonna go ahead and put this right in my pan under this medium heat, and we're gonna let this melt down. Now, the powdered sugar will start to melt or caramelize. While this occurs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just keep stirring it. I don't want it to get too hot, and I don't want it to um, not melt. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you in here a little bit closer so you can watch this. Ah, there is one more thing. An ordinary sheet of tin foil. That's something that we can put our pyrotechnic devices on and shape them or mold them after they are turned into sort of a kind of a peanut butter um, consistency. So hold on just a second and I'm going to bring you right over here. Okay, I've got you over here. I've turned on my heat a little bit. The heat is now at about six, six or seven. And this could take a while, so you may see that I will compress it in the actual video. What's going to happen is the sugar is going to start to melt and caramelize. You don't want the sugar to burn and you don't want this to get too hot or it actually could ignite right here in your kitchen. This is something you do not want to have happen, believe me. So I'm going to go ahead and let this melt down. Now, you could also take some dry dyes um, used to dye clothing, the dry powdered dyes such as red or blue and you could add some color to your smoke as well. But right now, we're just going to go ahead and let this melt down. That should start to take place momentarily. Okay, our sugar is just beginning to melt. You'll see it's starting to caramelize and it's starting to become a liquid. Now, once your sugar starts to become a liquid, it should go pretty fast. It's gonna turn into sort of like a brown caramel color. If it starts to turn brown real fast or starts to burn or starts to smoke, you need to reduce your heat immediately. And you'll see once this gets cooked down, exactly what we end up with. There, it's really starting to go quickly here. In fact, I think it's a little bit too hot. It's starting to burn. So we want to remove it from the heat immediately if we start to see smoking like you just saw there. All right, our mixture is cooking down real nicely now. We have almost no white powder. We just have sort of clumping pieces of that potassium nitrate or that stump remover. Again, that stump remover. Um, not all stump removers are made completely of um, potassium nitrate, so you'll need to basically look online. They all have a website that you can go to for what the ingredients are in these things and you can find out if that's what they're made of or not. Now this is cooking up real well here. This is just turning into a real nice a real nice mess and that's what you're looking for. We don't want any white powdered sugar left. It all needs to be melted into the stump remover. All right, our mixture is just about the right consistency. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my burner completely. Well, actually I already have done that. I've just been heating it with the, uh, basically with the radiant heat from the heat left over on the burner down there on this glass top stove. Now, we're going to go ahead and move this off of the heat and we're gonna let that cool for about, hmm, 
I would say about 10 minutes. And I'll be right back with you and show you what we do next. Okay, after our mixture is cooled, but before it completely hardens, what we want to do next is take squares of tin foil, I don't know, about 8 inches by 8 inches or 6 inches by 6 inches. Now, if this is cool too much, it's going to be hard to do. Now, be very careful. You might want to wear some gloves when you do this because this stuff is still pretty hot and it will burn you right through the tin foil. The next thing we want to do is we want to take and we want to put some ball, make some balls of this solution in our tin foil like this, and it will be sticky. Now, if you touch it, make sure that you wash your hands really good afterwards. You want to leave the top exposed. Something like, should look something like this, sort of like a little cupcake. See how that looks? Now, this is still quite hot. It's, it's kind of burning my fingers, actually. So be careful. You can't let it cool too much, though. Otherwise, it'll be too hard, like mine's becoming now, and it won't work. Now, if it hardens like this, you can reheat it if it gets too hard too quick, if you let it cool too much. You can reheat this solution. In fact, I may put mine back here over the burner and try to heat it up a little bit. But you don't want it to be too hot when you're working with it, or you will burn your fingers. Something else you're going to need. You're going to need a long-handled lighter. Not a lighter that you're close up with, but something that has an extension on it. Now, this lighter is really nice because this lighter is made by Benzomatic, and it's refillable, and it makes sort of like a torch at the end. If you have a lighter like this that'll kind of be like a torch, then that'll work even better. So let's take these outside and see what we can do. I almost forgot. When these smoke pyrotechnic smoke devices are lit, they'll produce a lot of smoke, but they'll also produce flames and heat. They're not to be lit in, indoors. You've got to be outdoors in a well-ventilated area. You don't want to breathe the smoke. And another thing that to be very careful of is they become very very hot. In fact, it will melt the tin foil. It'll go right through it and melt the tin foil wrapper. So it needs to be done on a surface that you don't care about damaging. I'm going to do it out in my fire ring. I'm going to do it on dirt, um, on a brick, on dirt, something like that works well. A gravel driveway, however, we'll make a burn mark on cement. So that being said, exercise caution when messing around with these things. If you're young, if you're under 18 even, Look for the supervision of an adult and the permission from a parent or an adult so that they can help you do this. Okay, we're out at the fire ring here and there are our, it actually made five pyrotechnic smoke devices. And I've added some drops of food coloring, green, red, and blue to certain ones. One are, one's green, one's red, one's blue, and some plain ones. I don't know that the liquid food coloring will actually work. It may put them out, it may not work at all. That's why I suggested using dry dyes. But we're gonna try this here. Now it's pretty windy out, so the smoke's gonna blow pretty quickly. You're also going to notice that I put down a brick in the center of my fire ring or a piece of uh, cement that I don't care about. I did that because I don't, because these make a residue. It'll make like a hard plastic um, pool that's molten. You don't want to touch it until it hardens, cools, and dries. And then it can be scraped off of surfaces, but it can damage about any surface that it comes in contact with. I didn't want that to melt down into my fire ring because my dogs come out here and it will be sweet like sugar, even though it'll be burned and they could want to eat it and that would be very dangerous so i put a uh, basically a piece of cement there so that we wouldn't have any problems i'm going to pan up just a hair here and we're going to go get started here we go start with a small one Take some some doing to light these. They won't light real easily. Once they light, they shouldn't go out. And here goes our first pyrotechnic smoke. They'll start out kind of slow, but they will get going very fast. So it looks like it could actually go out. Okay, we're gonna light that one again. They light real well, you'll see. They just seem to burn rather rapidly. There we go. These will make quite a bit of smoke. They burn rather slowly and they smoke quite a bit. 
you can see that molten material coming out of there. You're going to notice that it's actually going to melt right through the tin foil. It's that hot. So keep clear of it. Don't let it splash on you. Don't let it touch you. And do not touch it with your fingers until it is completely cool. You may want a bucket of water to pour on top of those when they're finished to cool them off. There it goes. It's still going. Now that one's making sort of a grayish, dark gray smoke. We'll try another color here in a second. In fact, while that one's going, let me go ahead and set another one here. Move that over the stick. Boy, that's really starting to go big now. Look at that thing. We'll add to this little pyrotechnic display though. Those. Now, this one has some green food coloring in it. It doesn't look like it actually changed the color of the smoke at all. I was wondering if it would, and apparently it will not. So dry dyes should change it somewhat, but obviously the liquid food coloring did not, did not work, did not change the color of the smoke. Boy, that one's really starting to go. There it goes. Wow, it's like a volcano. Be very cautious. These can get very violent, these eruptions of smoke. Now, that one's really going big. Look at that. At nighttime, they make a real nice pyrotechnic display as well. Let me zoom out to give you an idea of how much smoke we're creating. Quite a bit. I'll zoom back in. When they're finished, all of the liquid or all of the sugar and mixture should be completely um, eaten away, except for some liquid that will remain. Okay, let's do another one. This will be the last one that I do tonight, today. Number three. Pyrotechnic smoke devices. On do try this at home. mixture's cooking down real nicely now. You'll notice that there's almost no... Oh, that was good. It was like an earthquake. Okay, let's start that over. Okay, I've made four of these and we're going to take them outside. 